Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to cover a really important topic that comes up all the time in clinical practice when I have owners asking me what is the right amount of exercise for my senior dog that has some arthritis. Now it's a tricky question to answer but we're going to go through a couple of points that might help you at home work out what the right amount of exercise is for your dogs. Before we head in onto that section please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We've got some awesome topics coming up and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. So the first thing that I want to point out is that as a dog goes through their life from puppyhood to seniorhood, they have different phases of energy and activity requirements. When a dog is young, when they're in their puppyhood, they have a lot of changes happening in their musculoskeletal system. So sometimes less exercise is beneficial for them so that their body can mature safely and without any injuries happening in that early phase. When a dog is in the middle phase of their life, that's usually when they're most active and most energetic. And then it's absolutely normal that as a dog goes into their senior phase, that their exercise requirements change. So understanding these different phases of your dog's life is gonna be really important for you, working out how to optimize the amount of exercise that you do for your dog. Now I've already mentioned that it's a natural progression in one's life to have a reduced tolerance to exercise. So when we're young, we do lots of high intensity workouts. When a person is older, they will do gentler forms of exercise to suit their body. And the same thing can be applicable to our dogs. So there's a couple of other things that I wanted to point out in relation to seniors. The first thing is a phenomenon called sarcopenia. This is a natural degradation of skeletal muscle where joint fibers become smaller and we can see that looking like muscle wastage in our dog's hind legs. They sometimes get it in the front legs, but really common to see it in the rear legs. The other issue that can affect and impair a dog's ability to exercise is if they have some issues with their joint health. The most common thing we see in clinical practice is osteoarthritis. That's where there's a degradation of the cartilage within the joints that can set off an inflammatory process which causes a dog pain, the dog will start to limp and that can massively affect their ability to perform everyday activities. So we need to be aware of these things as we try as owners to work out the best amount of exercise for our dog's health and body long term. Now something I use every day in clinical practice when I'm talking to owners about their dog's exercise requirements is what I call the Goldilocks formula. So we're all familiar with the story about Goldilocks and the three bears. In that story, Goldilocks snuck into the bear's home and tried three different things, their food, their beds, and their chairs. She always went with the middle option. Now, I would like to use that story when explaining to owners how to go about finding the right amount of exercise for their dogs. If we do too much exercise for seniors, especially if they've got joint health issues, we are potentially putting them into that category of over-exercising and fatigue, which drives pain, and that can cause further issues for that dog's quality of life. On the flip side, if we do too little exercise and don't exercise our dogs enough, we're gonna accelerate that process of sarcopenia, which I explained to you before, in which the dog's muscle system starts to weaken. So we're really trying as owners to find the right amount of exercise to optimize our dog's joint health and strength as they age. So you're probably wondering, how do we monitor our dog's quality of exercise? I'd like you to get into the habit of paying attention to some metrics, like how far in distance your dog walks. The other thing that you could pay attention to is how long your dog walks for. That gives us some metrics to work with because then we can start to analyze the quality of movement that they're doing during that time frame, see how it changes. And if we think quality isn't where it should be, we can alter those metrics, but it gives us a great way to document the quality of movement that they're doing. The other thing that I'd like you to start paying very close attention to on your walks with your dog is how well they're flowing by your side. Often I hear of owners telling me about their dog that starts off with great gusto, but midway or towards the end of the walk, the dog starts to slow down, pant, lay down, lower their head carriage, things like that. So those are signs that something has changed in relation to the dog's comfort and ability to move. So keeping an eye on those things will help you analyze your dog's quality of movement. 
Signs of dysfunction on your walks may include the following. Limping, also known as lameness, lowering their head, slowing down, dragging the hind legs, sitting or laying down on the walk. If you notice any of these signs that I've just mentioned, it's definitely worth looking at your dog's exercise schedule and adjusting it to optimize it. Ultimately, what we're aiming for is that the dog gets enjoyment and enrichment on their walks without overstressing their body, which can fuel a cycle of pain. I also want you to start being reflective after exercise and assessing how your dog is that evening or the next day when sometimes joint pain can show up. Dogs are experts at hiding pain, so when they're out enjoying their sniff time, they can actually be pushing through some discomfort. So as owners, we wanna get really good at assessing our dogs for pain during the activity and also afterwards. So I really hope this video has helped you and your mindset about how you exercise your senior dog. Unfortunately, there's no one size fits all. And even with the same dog, things can change from day to day. But hopefully by using these tips, you can start to really closely observe your dog, make adjustments to their schedule if needs be, and hopefully they can exercise with less pain and that will maximize their quality of life moving forwards.